Warning, warning. As a medical doctor, I must inform you that there are side effects to this coaching session. Beware. It may enhance your self-esteem, cause you to experience vibrant health, encounter long-term weight loss, heal damaged relationships. Warning, there are side effects to this coaching session. It may increase your enthusiasm for life and bring about hope. It may cause you to have productive and optimistic thinking. It could even help you not allow messed up people to ruin the rest of your life and help you realize the masterpiece that you are and empower you to be the boss of your brain. Warning, these side effects may be long-term. This is Dr. Isabel from DrOnAMission.com. Hello, Dr. Kelly Head. Welcome to Dr. On a Mission. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thanks for inviting me. How are things in Portland? They're, they're pretty good. I mean, as good as they can be during this kind of crazy year. <laughs> it has been a crazy year, the pandemic year. Yes, pandemic and, and gosh, a lot more too. Mm -hmm. I love Portland because I learned how to drink very good coffee in Portland. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty our coffee. Our, I guess our beer too. Oh yes. Your beer. I can't wait until they start coming out with gluten-free beer. Oh, uh, uh, well they do. Oh, they fantastic. Do. Yeah. I'll have to tell you about it. After. Okay, great. <laughs> well, let me introduce Dr. Kelly head. She is a dear friend of mine now because she has helped me greatly in helping understand hormones. Dr. Kelly is a board certified naturopath doctor in Portland, Oregon, and an educator in hormone testing and women's health. She is a clinical consultant for Precision Analytical, the company who makes the Dutch test, which, if you're unfamiliar, is a test that offers one of the most comprehensive hormone panels available on the market today. Dr. Kelly's primary role is to educate health practitioners on how to interpret their patient's Dutch hormone test results. And you do an excellent job at that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> she tells me she, is abs she absolutely adores helping these practitioners learn about how the Dutch test can help shed light on their patient's symptoms, which often include heavy bleeding, cramping, acne, infertility, mood swings, depression, hot flashes, exhaustion, insomnia, low sex drive, difficulty losing weight, and so much more. Dr. Kelly completed her medical education at the National University of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon. And she has also completed a private residency at Pearl Natural Health in downtown Portland, where she specializes in inflammatory bowel disease, thyroid health, adrenal health, and women's health. In her free time, she enjoys lifting weights, good job, and surfing Oregon waves while wearing a very thick wetsuit. I bet you wear a <laughs> thick wetsuit. And, yes. and she has an Instagram account where she posts on women's health. You can follow her at, and the handle is at Dr. Dr. Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, H-E-A-D. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for that beautiful bio. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do, I do wear a very thick wetsuit. It's pretty cold out here, and I got my hoodie and my booties and my gloves on, so. And you never get cold? I do. Actually, I went surfing one time when the sand was frozen, and it was in the 30s, so it was, I was cold that day, for sure. Well, talk about the cold plunge. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Before we start talking about the cold plunge, I have just started doing a 15 second freezing cold shower at the end of my shower. Oh, nice. So yeah, I have too. In the last month, I've incorporated it. It's not that easy. No, but you know what I really like about it? Hmm. 
it's learning how to control your brain and not letting your brain control you because you know what we're thinking just before we turn on that cold water, right? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I know, right? Sometimes I just do a little lukewarm and I'm like, it's not a very cold day, but, but yeah, no, it, it's supposed to have a lot of benefits and it yes. helps the vagal nerve and help with the adrenal. So I'm, I'm doing my best. And our mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that at another time, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'd like to, um, well, I, first of all, I never learned about the Dutch test and urine testing in medical school. And I just would love for you to share your, your knowledge about the importance of urine testing on male and female hormone testing, because we as doctors all are taught to just do the blood and the blood test tells you everything. And I remember in medical school, women would come to me, I would do the blood test, everything looked fine and they would still be, be symptomatic. So yes. take it away, Dr. Kelly. Yes, and I'm so passionate about the Dutch test, but I'll try to keep this quick. Um, yeah, with the urine testing, we do have a lot of research showing that the urine, estrogen and progesterone is very, very similar to what's happening in the blood. but Unlike a blood test where you get that snapshot of the estrogen and the progesterone at that specific time during the day, the urine testing is nice because you get more of an average or more of a comprehensive look at your hormones over the course of the entire collection period, which is about a day's worth of data. So you can get a little bit more information than just that, that one single snapshot. Um, plus the urine, I mean, we're looking at estrogen and progesterone, but we're looking at all the metabolites of estrogen, the metabolites of progesterone, and the androgens and the metabolites of, of the androgens. So it can give you some more information about your overall hormone levels, but also how are you metabolizing your estrogen? Are you favoring a pattern or a pathway that might increase your risk for breast cancer? Are you methylating and clearing out your estrogens well? Could that be causing your estrogen dominant symptoms? Um, and one more thing, Dutch test, we also have our cycle mapping. So you can look at your estrogen and your progesterone over the course of one cycle or one collection period, which is amazing because you get so much more information than if you just went in for a blood draw on day 21 of your cycle. And sometimes I see women with normal within range estrogens in their luteal phase, but above range estrogens in their ovulatory phase. So they could have all these estrogen dominant type symptoms like heavy bleeding and breast tenderness and mood swings. But when they go in and get a blood draw, it looks like their estrogen's within range and normal. But in fact, it's not. And the doctor says, oh, you're fine. Everything's fine. It's not your hormones. But we know that inner doctor in us like knows something's going on. Yep, it's true. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about the metabolites? Because that was a big a big wow for me, because I never learned that in medical school about the importance of the metabolites and yeah, explain definitely. what metabolites are and all that stuff. Yeah, right. So when we have progesterone in our body, for example, or estrogen, uh, or even the androgens like testosterone or DHEA, um, our body will metabolize them downstream into other androgens. And for example, like the, the famous one that we all know about is testosterone being metabolized by 5-alpha reductase into 5-alpha DHT. 5-alpha DHT is really important, I think, to measure because it's, it's three times more potent than testosterone and it loves to hang out in the tissue. So 5-alpha DHT is the androgen that is causing, you know, if it's too high, can cause acne, can cause hair loss, um, facial hair growth, body hair growth, and so I love that we have that metabolite on the Dutch test that we're looking at. But um, looking at progesterone, you know, when we metabolize and clear out progesterone, we're metabolizing it into alpha and beta pregnenolone. Those are the ones that we measure. And we know that the alpha metabolite is the metabolite that acts on the GABA receptors in the brain, which can help with sleep and anxiety. So if a woman isn't metabolizing her progesterone into the alpha, if she's shifting more or pushing her, her progesterone more down the beta pathway, then we might see even more issues with mood or anxiety. Um, but there, actually there's a lot to say on that topic. It's not just low alpha leading to mood issues. If you have high alpha, that can also lead to mood issues. So 
Um, there's a lot of different patterns that we can see on the Dutch test, even with the estrogen metabolites. When we metabolize and clear out our estrogens, sometimes we don't do it in the most healthy way. And we know that alcohol and smoking and inflammation and stress and some environmental chemicals can push our estrogens down pathways that can increase our risk for breast cancer or even increase risk for prostate cancer in men. So looking at the estrogen metabolites is even important for men. Yes, which I have learned when I call you up and I go, help me with this Dutch test for this man that I'm helping out. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. such a good educator. You've helped Thank me out you. greatly. I was like, we got to share you with the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. I, I love education. So that is my favorite thing to do. I want to kind of spend the next little bit talking about women going through perimenopause transition into menopause. And I'll share again with the audience my story. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. Um, six years ago, I tried to take my life. I went into a spiral um, of 17 nights of only sleeping two hours, mm. three hours. I, I did not know what was happening to me. And I just got to the point where I gave up and I just tried to end it. And, um, and then I was, you know, I was helped. That was stopped, that, that whole episode was stopped. However, I know this sounds really, really strange, but I am so grateful I went through that experience because it helped me understand and take a deep dive into women's hormones. And that's where I started to learn about Dutch testing. And that's mm -hmm. where I started to learn about the importance of the progesterone, the importance of the testosterone, the importance of, of estrogen. And, you know, I was healthy. I was like strong and healthy and I wasn't overweight. My body fat was low. I was exercising. My husband and I were so sweet. I had a great life. I was a doctor. I started doctor on a mission. So I had everything to live for. But on the inside, oh my gosh, it was turmoil. So I would love for you to go ahead and share with our audience about women's hormones and how they can experience insomnia, they can experience depression, and it's not all in their head, that this is actually in their body and, it's, and it needs to be researched and looked into because doctors don't know about this. Yes. Are you okay with that? Oh, for sure, for sure, Isabel. Thank you for sharing your story, first of all. And just, we're so happy that you are here with us right now. Me too. <laughs> I, I'm I love glad. Your, yeah, I love seeing your smiling face. So, um, but it, it does bring an important issue here around women's health and perimenopause as women are getting older and going into menopause, how our hormones do fluctuate and it can affect our ability to sleep well and our sleep efficiency and how much deep sleep we're getting. It can affect our, um, our, our mood for sure. You know, anxiety, depression is usually higher around that time and it can affect our inclination to take our lives. So I was looking up some statistics. I thought it was really interesting. And in the USA from 1999 to 2018, and this is from the CDC, the, the women who were more, most at risk for suicide were ages 45 to 64. And we know that perimenopause is about age 42 to 52. Um, menopause, women go into menopause around age 45 to 55, though the average is around age 52. But in Australia in 2015, the age range of women who were, you know, had increased risk for suicide was 45 to 49. So there you go, it's still right in that perimenopausal range. And for New Zealand, New Zealand's interesting. From what I found, the age range 20 to 24 had the most suicide for women, and then 15 to 19, but then after that was 45 to 49. So just, just overall, basically, we are seeing increased rates of suicide around that perimenopausal stage. And a lot of people do think it's from these fluctuating hormones, you know, our, our body is changing, 
our ovaries are starting to kind of, you know, uh, hand over the baton to, to the adrenals because after our ovaries stop producing our sex hormones, then it's up to our adrenals to produce the majority of our sex hormones. Right. So in perimenopause, um, you know, a lot of people think about symptoms such as low libido, hot flashes, weight gain, uh, but mood issues are definitely significant and insomnia is significant. And we, there's a couple of theories on why these changes are happening with the mood issues and the insomnia. And we know that with insomnia, like, you know, you were going, it was 17 days, 17 days, Whew, 17 days with, with two hours sleep, two to three hours and still showing up and being a medical doctor for my patients. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's a lot of stress on top of it. And we do know that with insomnia, it increases your risk for depression and anxiety and suicide. It's a risk factor for suicide. Um, so do you, you want to get into all the reasons that might cause these mood issues and insomnia? You yeah. bet, because I've got a, you know, I've got a session that's coming up. Uh, a virtual masterclass, which I'll talk to you about later. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a four hour virtual masterclass and it's, it, I'm calling it the bossy brain solution, how to overcome anxiety and depression naturally, mm -hmm. how I did it and how you can too. And we will be discussing all this stuff. So please share because it's so, okay. women, women don't know this stuff and I'm here to share and help. Yeah. So I'll talk about insomnia first, please. <laughs> a lot, yeah, a lot of times in perimenopause, women start having sleep issues, and um, of course, I always like to rule out other causes like autoimmune issues, um, thyroid issues, sleep apnea, for example. As women age and as we go through perimenopause and menopause, we have an increased risk for diabetes, increased risk for uh, obesity, and gaining weight. So it can change our body habitus and lead to more snoring or lead to more sleep apnea. But, you know, without, after ruling out all those other issues, um, sometimes when we get older, our progesterone production declines or we start having more irregular cycles. Maybe our cycles are longer, so we're not making progesterone as often. Mm -hmm. When we do make progesterone, that corpus luteum that makes our progesterone, perhaps that production of progesterone is lower. And we know, I think I touched on this a little bit before, but we know that progesterone gets metabolized into these progesterone metabolite. And the alpha metabolite crosses the blood brain barrier and acts on the GABA receptors in the brain. So it actually, it really does help with our sleep and it really does help with our mood. So people call progesterone the joy of life hormone. And sometimes in perimenopause, I'll have women start cycling progesterone. Or if their cycles are really far apart, like couple months apart, I might even have them just start taking oral progesterone every night to help with that sleep, to help with that mood. How much, how much do you recommend? Gosh, it's, it's different for every woman. And it, it really, I kind of, you know, base it off the of symptoms, but also the research. So if she's taking estrogen and she has a uterus mm -hmm. and the research is showing that 100 to 200 milligrams of oral progesterone at least 12 consecutive days out of the month mm -hmm. um, or the same dose, 100 to 200 milligrams of intravaginal progesterone. And this is progesterone placed into the upper third quadrant of the vaginal canal. So not just the labia um, and used at least 12 consecutive days out of the month that that can be safe to help protect her endometrial lining, her uterine lining from that hyperplasia and increased risk of cancer that you can see with estrogen, unopposed estrogen, I should say. Um, some people think that 14 consecutive days out of the month is a safer option. Some people think the higher dose 200 is a safer option, but if a woman isn't taking progesterone or isn't taking estrogen, I should say, um, or if she doesn't have a uterus, then the dosing is a little more lenient. You know, we don't have to do hundred or 200 to protect her uterine lining. We could even start off with 25 or 50. The most common one that I use is a hundred, but it really is kind of on a case by case basis. So I always have people talk to their doctor. Right. And we're talking about bioidentical. 
Yes. Progesterone, right? Progesterone, <laughs> yes. Micronized progesterone. Yes, where you get, they, get it from a compounding pharmacy. Yes. yes. Or it's, you can get it prescription. It's called yeah. Prometrium. Yeah. Yes. But a lot of times we compound it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in that perimenopausal state or phase, a lot, a lot of people, it is a very stressful time for women too. And a lot of times they're taking care of their children or they're taking care of their parents that are getting older and they have their job to worry about. And so that can really affect our sleep too. It's not always just lower progesterone, but supporting progesterone production with the progesterone or even Vitex. And I'll talk about that a little later could be. Yes, helpful. yes, yes. Vitex, I've heard. I've used Vitex on some people and that seems to help too. Yeah, yeah, especially um, kind of younger cycling women, Vitex has been shown to lengthen the luteal phase and to increase progesterone production, but it also helps to increase LH signaling. And LH signaling is what tells the corpus luteum in the ovaries to make progesterone. So in perimenopausal women, it, you know, their brain ovarian communication isn't as optimal as when you're younger in cycling. So the Vitex, sometimes I tend to use a little like higher dose in perimenopause, but there is some research in menopausal women with Vitex showing that it can help reduce anxiety mm -hmm. and it can help with hot flashes. And it does have some anti-inflammatory and some phytoestrogenic properties. So I suspect it might be working in that way. Interesting. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's a good, it's a good herb. I love it. But in, um, in women with these mood issues, there's some theories on why women might be having some mood issues in perimenopause. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I can think of are, well, first of all, we're on the estrogen roller coaster. In oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes women will have hot flashes for like three weeks straight because their estrogen's low. And then they'll have... Um, some breast tenderness and some acne and followed by some heavy bleeding because their estrogens like just surge and get super high. Um, so uh, the estrogen roller coaster, estrogen is actually really important for modulating serotonin levels. And we know that serotonin is involved with uh, mood issues, right? It's in, in, involved with our mood. Yes. So it's interesting because if serotonin or if, if estrogen gets too low, then serotonin can drop. But if estrogen gets too high, it can block the conversion of tryptophan to serotonin. Interesting. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so too low of estrogen or too high of estrogen can affect serotonin levels. So that's one way that I think in perimenopause, our hormones could be affecting our mood. Um, you know, estrogen, you, you always need it in kind of that sweet spot to work well with our blood sugars too. So if it gets too low or too high, we can have some blood sugar issues, we might um, start, you know, gaining more weight. I think that's po possibly why in perimenopause we start gaining more weight. It's a little more difficult to lose weight too. It's such a oh, challenging period of time. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm not. I'm not. I haven't been there yet, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you'll be ready. That's for sure. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm kind of like a force before you. So you kind of go, okay, I don't want to do what Isabel went through. <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll just ask you lots of questions, you know? Yeah, How yeah. How did you do that? Yes, I'm here. And estrogen, another really interesting fun fact for estrogen is it is a MAO or MAO, you know, the mo monoamine oxidase. Yes. It's a MAO inhibitor centrally. So when estrogen levels decline, you often see MAO activity increase. And what does MAO do? It metabolizes out serotonin, it metabolizes out dopamine, and it metabolizes out our norepinephrine, our epinephrine, our adrenaline. So it, um, with that increased metabolism and clearing out of these neurotransmitters, we can see some fluctuations with our mood. Amazing, amazing. Know, right? The and, body's and amazing. And, you know, it really hurts my heart when I hear women going in for a hysterectomy and the doctor just says, yeah, I, and the, the surgeon just takes out the ovaries too. 
You know, the ovaries are so important. And when I asked them, well, why did they take out your ovaries? Oh, they said I didn't need it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> only somebody yeah. that doesn't have ovaries would say that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm always like, well, let's see if we can save the ovaries at least because we need we need that estrogen. And if they take the ovaries out, at least, you know, stick an estrogen patch on them right away. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, estrogen is so important now that I'm helping uh, prevent and reverse uh, cognitive decline and early Alzheimer's. Estrogen is so important for brain function, for memory. It's amazing. I'll have women, I'll check their Dutch test and I see that their estrogen is low. And, you know, I make sure that we do all the right things to make sure we're not going to get breast cancer and prevent all that. And they're not high risk for breast cancer. And yeah. then I'll start them on the estrogen patch and their memory starts coming back. They're like, wow, the lights are back on. So estrogen <laughs> is so important. And we know that dementia um, is higher in women than it is in men. And now understanding all about hormones, you can understand why dementia is higher in women and Alzheimer's is higher in women. Yeah, it is very important for our cognition, our memory, our concentration. A lot of women will get brain fog along with the mood issues, mm -hmm. omnia. Mm -hmm. You're always like, is it the low estrogen causing the brain fog or is it the insomnia? Is it, It's probably a little bit of everything. A mixture, yeah. And I'll tell you, I do have men that I that have problems with sleep and I'll put them on uh, micronized progesterone and they sleep a lot better, 100 to 200 milligrams at night. Don't have to worry about a uterus in them. So, and they have a yeah. good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And me personally, you know, what I've learned from this whole thing is one, I, I need my estrogen. So I've got my estrogen patch. I've got my oral progesterone that I take at nighttime. I do uh, DHEA. I use uh, uh, a little bit of testosterone and plus a whole, you know, this is just the hormone part. You also have to take care of, you know, what you're eating and your sleep and all that. But that has just yeah. helped me understand and take care of the bigger picture. And I feel like, I'm like this laboratory, you know, I'm this experiment and I'm experimenting on myself and that helps me understand how to help my patients. So I am really grateful. It was, I didn't like it, but I'm glad I went through it. And now I'm on the other side going, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I can help you. Yeah. Right. Now you have the experience, you went through it. So you know how to help other people and you know what they're going through. Right, and I've got you, Dr. Kelly, to help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Because <laughs> you are my go-to doctor now, I'm telling you. You are such a good teacher. I love the way you teach. You're so patient and repeat things and send me all these articles. So I really <laughs> Thanks. So. Yeah, we, we've got a good good group of docs. I think we have like 10 docs on, on our team. So yes. a lot of consultation power there, you know? we all share our information and our research articles. So it's, it's really a great, a wonderful team to be right. a part of. Yeah. So, so if women or men are in America, they can, can you tell us where they can get the Dutch test? Yes, yeah, so they can go to, the best place would probably be to go to our website. And the website is www.dutchtest.com. So that's D-U-T-C-H dot uh test t-e-s-t -E don't want to forget that dot com <laughs> and uh dutch is actually an acronym for dried urine testing for comprehensive hormones if you're wondering <laughs> um yeah. they can also call us at 503-687-2050 or email info at dutchtest.com great and if people are in New Zealand and Australia, they can contact me. Uh, I do do the, the Dutch test and they can contact me at info at doctoronamission.com. That's doctor, one long word, D-O-C-T-O-R on a mission.com. And yes, I am on that mission until my last breath to help prevent and reverse disease and give people hope because we need it out there in medicine. We do. I yeah. totally. Uh, just, I'm happy that there's practitioners out there like you 
that uh, do take a more functional approach and are looking at the hormones when it comes to mood and not just starting a perimenopausal woman on an SSRI. Which is what was done to me. I was mm -hmm. told, okay, you're going to need to be on Prozac and take it for the rest of your life. And I was like, I know that inner doctor inside of me knows that that is not the answer. And I was a doctor and I used to do that for my patients, but I knew, no, this is not the way to go. Yeah. So I encourage everybody out there that's listening to know that you've got an inner doctor inside of you. And when you come to somebody like Dr. Kelly or myself, know that we're your second opinion. We want you to listen to that inner doctor inside of you because it is very, very, very wise. Right, Kelly? Yes, 100%. The body is wise. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, are you going uh, surfing today? Today? No. No. But <laughs> going surfing this next week a bunch yeah <laughs> today yeah. Uh, i gotta work and I, I live like an hour no i were i live two hours from the beach so it's quite the ordeal to get there but yeah okay. no it's fun. well if you ever come down to new zealand come visit us we're we're about 15 20 minutes away from the beach so you can and you won't have to wear a wetsuit yeah well, yeah. actually, during winter, you will. <laughs> well, I won't come during winter. My fiance and I want to go for our honeymoon. So but one day after pandemic. Good. All right. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for your time and expertise and beautiful smile. Yeah. Thanks for having me as well. It was great. My pleasure. We'll do this again. But, okay. For sure. Sounds good. Another topic, of course. Yeah. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>